Would you like to sound more British? Would you like to learn the modern received pronunciation British accent? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome back to English with Catherine Me. My name's Catherine and I'm here to help you. Let's just be clear, when I say British and sound more British, of course there are many different accents in Britain. Don't you forget it. In fact, my advice would be to have maximum exposure to lots of different accents so that when you come here, you're not completely confused. However, the accent that I will be teaching today is my own, which is the modern received pronunciation British accent, which can be found in the south of England. And today I'm going to be reading out parts of the book that I'm currently reading, which is Far From the Madding Crowd, an absolute classic novel by Thomas Hardy. And guess what? You're going to shadow me. It's a very, very good way to learn an accent. Imitation, guys, it's key. You're going to listen to me talking, you're going to hear my tips, and then you're going to practice along with me. And as promised, we're going to do all of this in 10 minutes. Is that the time? We need to get started. Far from the madding crowd. Now, this has been on my list to read for absolutely ages. I swear, every single person I've met in the last two years has told me to read this. So I decided it was time. I will be honest, I'm actually only up to page 25. But I have to say, it is amazing so far. Now, if you like pastoral, countryside, green, British scenes, you're going to love this novel. It's about a young farmer, and he has the most amazing name, Gabriel Oak. And the story is about his love for another amazingly named woman, Bath Sheba Everdeen. Bath Sheba Everdeen. Is there a more beautiful name? I don't think so. Okay, Tom has just told me that it's Bath Sheba, and I'm thinking that's because he's from the north. <laughs> Comment down below which one it should be, Bath Sheba or Bath Sheba? Who knows? His Christian name was Gabriel, and on working days, he was a young man of sound judgment, easy motions, proper dress, and general good character. In this book, there is so much description, which is great for vocabulary. That's why I recommend the book. Let's look at the pronunciation. What we do is we stress the words that carry the most meaning in the sentence. In this sentence, I'm stressing Christian name. Christian name. In fact, I'm even putting more stress on Christian and less stress on name because Christian is the most important bit to stress in those two words because that's the particular type of name we're talking about. A Christian name is your first name. So my Christian name is Catherine. So we're going to stress Christian name. Christian name. I'm also stressing Gabriel because it's the name. It's important. It needs to be communicated in that sentence. So his Christian name was Gabriel. Can you hear that? It goes like that, doesn't it? His Christian name was Gabriel. I want to show you the tricky pronunciation of work or working. This is something my students really struggle with. I think it's because it just, it's so confusing, isn't it? Because it looks like it should be walk. It's actually er, uh, work. It's like the word early or her or shirt. If you can say those words, then you can probably say work. So working days working days. Just want to show you the schwa in a, instead of a in a sentence, we're much more likely to say a, uh, and again this is to help the flow of the sentence so that it sounds smooth and beautiful. In the construction of was and a, we're going to say was a, was a, and because was ends with a consonant, we can easily blend it to the a, because, well, it's, it's quite easy, actually. So, was a, instead of was a, it's was a. And we almost make a z, you know, just to get that really smooth and beautiful. I want to draw your attention now to what we do when there is a list of commas. When we are listing things, we're going to put something and then comma, comma, comma. So basically, it's how we speak when we are giving a list. Here we have sound judgment, easy motions, proper dress, and general good character. Can you hear that my voice actually goes down when I say general good character? Because it's resolving. What we want is the feeling of resolve. After a long list, the tension builds as you say those comma words, and then what you want is a nice at the end so we can all relax. <laughs> it's like we reach the end of the sentence. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Keep the stress high with easy motions, proper dress, and general good character. 
Duh. I'm going to read it again now. Listen out for the tips I just gave. His Christian name was Gabriel, and on working days he was a young man of sound judgment, easy motions, proper dress, and general good character. Now, shadow me. His Christian name was Gabriel, and on working days he was a young man of sound judgment, easy motions, proper dress, and general good character. I bet you sound so good. There was also a cat in a willow basket, from the partly opened lid of which she gazed with half-closed eyes and affectionately surveyed the small birds around. You can really imagine a cat in a basket just peeking out. <laughs> About the pronunciation. We've got the same construction as before in the other quotation with was also. You can see that was ends with a consonant and also starts with a vowel so we can blend them together, combine them. Was also, was also. Make sure you don't say also, because also is a different A. You've got to be careful with that A. It's quite unusual, that A sound. Well, more unusual than the others. All, 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 all. It's like that, also, also. Make sure your A in cat is really at the back of the throat. There's another short A. I call it the apple A because it's exactly the same A sound as in apple. And my students can always make that sound because it's right at the start of the word and it's easy, apple. But in cat, it's in the middle of that word and you've got to hear it right back here. Sometimes people struggle with this because they make the sound too far forwards in the mouth. So it ends up sounding like cut, cut, but no, we want cat cat. I can almost feel some strange bones that I didn't know that I had going out here when I say that. Cat. How weird. The lovely word willow. Oh, I love this word because it reminds me of my favourite tree. My favourite trees are willow trees. They are the most romantic trees ever invented, if trees were invented, because they have these leaves that swoop down and you can hide underneath and read your book and no one can see you. <laughs> Inside that word we have the alphabet O guys. It's really round. O. Oh, o. Oh, willow. We've got what I call the arm A in basket. It's an R sound. Arm. Basket. Now don't be afraid to take a little bit longer on this sound because you really need just a bit of time to make it. Basket. Basket. I'm sure you're all wondering about the word affectionately. It's a bit tricky, isn't it? So let's break it down. The first letter is, you guessed it, a schwa. It's not a, it's a. So it's a feck, affectionately. Feck should be loud in that word to give the right intonation. Just be careful with the pronunciation of birds as well. I hear people saying beards, beards, which actually sounds a bit more like beards. Uh, so be careful, it's bird. It's the same sound as in work that we were just talking about working, weren't we? That sound, like, uh, is in bird as well. So just be careful. Bird. Okay, I'm going to read it. Listen out for my tips that I just gave you. There was also a cat in a willow basket from the partly opened lid of which she gazed with half-closed eyes and affectionately surveyed the small birds around. I know it's really difficult, but I'm sure you can do it. Let's go. There was also a cat in a willow basket, from the partly opened lid of which she gazed with half-closed eyes and affectionately surveyed the small birds around. One more time. There was also a cat in a willow basket, from the partly opened lid of which she gazed with half-closed eyes and affectionately surveyed the small birds around. Well, I hope that was helpful, everyone. Hopefully you can now sound a little bit more British and perfect your modern RP accent. I love showing you what I'm currently reading, so there will be more episodes just like this one. Especially as the seasons change, I tend to change the books that I'm reading to reflect whatever season it is. So at the moment we're going into autumn, and this book is perfect for that. If you enjoyed my video, please click subscribe. It would be so great and it really helps me out. So grateful for all your support. Love your comments, always read them. You can follow me on Instagram if you'd like to. I post about my daily life and what I get up to. Just type in English with Catherine and you'll find me. I'll see you next Friday for another video. Bye.